Hey guys, Greg Med from Med for Knife, MKT USA. What's going on? You know, I'm sitting here. I just made the mistake of looking on Facebook. I haven't looked on Facebook in quite a while. That's pretty bright, shining off my head, isn't it? Let me see if uh, maybe. Oh, I should get Jeff, my real tall guy, to come in here and undo a light or two. Let me see if I can do that right while I'm here without falling too badly. Are you guys still there? If you're there, the paint, pay no attention. Maybe that's better. That's probably got a little less glare. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. Anyways, um, you know, we try to get it right all the time, and I have really, 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 uh, I've put a lot of effort in trying to get it right all the time. You know, we, uh, Nick Shirley, here we go. Uh oh. <laughs> I hope that's not a bad, here we go. I'll finish this with a political rant maybe, or maybe I'll do a separate political rant video today, but I'll tell you what happened. I have given my second refund eight years into the business. Yesterday, last night it happened, and I was awake most of the night about it. <laughs> no, I made it. So, what happened was, we had a customer bought a knife from us some time ago, and they put it on the layaway. So, they were able to make payments over the course of four months. And then what happened was, when the day they made their fourth payment, they were on the phone like, where's my knife, when do I get my knife? And we're like, hey, you know, you're in the queue. You know, the, the, the bad news is when you make your fourth payment, your knife's not ready. And the good news is that when you made your first payment, it was mostly not paid for. We started making your, you know, we started the process of getting your knife made. Then he made some change. Hi, Misha. Then he made some changes. Really nice guy, but kind of like very, very pushy. And, uh, and that's cool. It's just... You know, at some point, like, I've got three really solid staff, four really solid front front office staff. And I got to tell you, they were worn out, kind of ragged by the guy. And I, they came to me and said, hey, let's give the guy his money back. And then me, to my, and then I, I called around a little bit to see if anybody else had heard of him. And I did run into somebody who'd heard of him. And they were like, oh, yeah, oh, look out. So, no big deal, but really, you know, a very, very polite guy, but definitely assertive and pushy and opinionated about what he wanted. To which, my crew was like, hey, listen, this guy's going to be a nightmare. Let's get rid of this guy. Let's give him his money back. So, me, I say, well, listen, let me talk to the guy. And I go, he's buying a $1,300 knife. Let's... You know, so many people are so easy. This one's going to be a little bit of a sticky wicket. We get paid. Let's take care of him. That was my response. Even after I called around and was given a slightly kind of like be wary. No big deal. And the guy was, you know, like I said, he's polite. His emails were a little bit uh, snarky. These long, you know, like, oh my God, this email. This guy's going to be a pain. And then he talked to him on the phone. He's really nice. And got a brother, got a brother. So really nice dude. But just... The wrong guy for our knife style for our company. So he starts chiseling on us as soon as he's made his last payment, how he wants his knife. And we're like, look, it doesn't really work that way. People have been in line ahead of you. <clears throat> and as it is, he got his knife pretty quickly because the Praetorian tie is not on as long a lead time as other knives. I knew it was going to be a problem. We got an email beforehand that said, you know, put extra work into my knife so that it's extra smooth. He wanted all this and he wants it set up very light and yada, yada, yada. To which, you know, they came to me and talked to me about it and I said, look, we don't do that. That's not what I fucking do. I don't try to read people's minds. I make knives my way, the way they work, the way they're gonna last for, for the use that they're intended. So, they had the conversation back and forth, and I'm like, how'd it go? And they're like, oh, it's, you know, it's fine. But then it's like, we have this conversation, and then like the next day, the email starts up like we never talked again. <clears throat> and that's cool. So I stepped in, I said, hey, listen, and they, everybody wanted to give us money back. I said, look, just 
hold off. Let me take care of him. Have him call me. Usually people give me a little less grief because they're like, oh, shit, Greg will tell me to fuck off or it's the owner or whatever. I don't know what the reason is. So I said, I got on the phone. I said, hey, listen, well, here's what happened. He got his knife and then the complaint started. It's sticky. So he sends it back. We get it. And the knife has uh, got issues. Now, the knife comes back, and I remember when it left, I inspected it, and I remember the knife. I remember what it was all about. The, the knife comes back, and the pivot's, Loctite's been broke, and some stuff's different, and it's had some stuff put on it. And if you talk to him on the phone, they say, oh, I just put the drop of this, I didn't touch anything. All I know is that when you put... 242 blue Loctite on, on screws, and when you break them loose, it forms a white powder. It's actually the blue shattering microscopically. It explodes and leaves this powder. So the telltale of a knife being taken apart is, does it have the same Loctite 242 that we use? Is it our oil-based 242? And, and the other thing is, uh, when you go to break it, are there neural marks or do you leave a neural mark? You can't take one of our knives apart without leaving a neural mark on the screws. Okay? So when I go to take one apart and there's and there's no break, like the screw doesn't snap loose, but I open it up and white powder comes out, it means it's been broken by somebody else. Anyways, no worries. The the knife came back the first time and it 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 had, had it had a couple of issues. And I'm like, what is going on? And I looked inside the knife and the knife looks used. So I personally at this point, because I know he's a bit of a sticky wicket, I get on the knife personally, I tune the thing, I, I'll take more effort cleaning out things than most people will. So I get in, I clean everything out with alcohol, I put it all back together, fucking perfect. It's got the swing of Praetorian tie supposed to have, it's a little heavy, new out of the box. Goes back to the guy. A week later we get a call. Knife comes back in, and, and he's mad that we didn't refund him for shipping and everything. I'm like, we'll take care of it. But you know, it's one, like he, the first time he called the return, he wanted to do a return. We got to give him an RMA number. We told him the instructions. He goes to the post office, puts it in the U.S. post office, sends it back to us. No RMA number, and most knives that get sent through the post office get stolen coming here to Phoenix. I can't tell you why. Anyway, so he breaks our whole procedure for taking care of him, and... You know, the knife is sitting out in a mailbox unattended for a week. We don't even know we've got the goddamn thing. So, uh, long story short, I get the knife back a second time. And he's mad. You know, he's starting to get a little worked up. Now I'm on the phone I'm going, hey now, let's see what's going on. I get the knife back. Pivot screws broke loose again. Now, I put it together last time. I cleaned it with alcohol. I used a really, really reliable Loctite that doesn't fail on its own. And I go to adjust the knife, see if it's been open, and the pivot screw just unscrews. So it's loose and it's got lash. He says it's sticky. So okay. So now I've got a knife. You know, I don't get many returns. And now I've got two off the same guy over a complaint that he was voicing concerns about before he ever got his knife. So let me reiterate. Before this man ever got his knife, he was telling us to really look out for a couple of areas that just so happens to be what we keep getting the knife sent back to us for. So what are the odds I made a knife with a very low return tempo that I made a knife that happens to have the exact problem that he's persnickety about? Okay, that's fine. Neither here nor there. I take the knife apart a second time, I clean it up, I lap it, I get on the phone, and I give him a little bit of a talking to. I'm like, God damn it, here are the rules. I'm going to take care of it, this is the last time. Boom, 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 here's the deal. Here's what's going on. Now, quit beating on your knife. Open it up, close it, put it together, use it. You know, I said, you know, he's been, he's been, he's been masturbating. He's been opening it up, banging it open. And I said, uh, you know, the guy's not an asset. He's a nice guy. He's a gentleman, but he's OCD nitnoiding me to fucking death. So finally, this is going on, and, and, and he's CCing these emails to my staff, and I texted him last night, and I said, listen, man, stop, stop emailing my staff. They're, 
They've reached their limit. Please just, you got the president of the company. Please just interact with me. At this point, Amy can't even believe. She's like, wow, you're really keeping it together. I'm like, yeah, the guy bought an expensive knife. He's a nice guy. He's really polite when I talk to him. I'm going to try and make this happen. So, the knife comes back a second time. I clean it all up. I put it back together. It's not sticky. It's not anything. I mail it back to him. Two days later, he's on the phone. My knife's sticky. I'm like, now, nah, hold on a second. It's the second time I cleaned it up. It ain't sticky. It ain't even close to sticky. It's delicious. It's got great action. And he says, well, when it's halfway open, it sticks. And I go, what do you mean when it's halfway open? How is it sticking when it's halfway open? Well, he didn't mean it's sticky. So he's a really nice guy, but he's not an expert on knives. So what he meant was, it's swing. There's a little hitch in it's swing. So about halfway open, maybe somewhere around here, he feels like it's a little sticky. So somewhere along the line, someone's got him doing this with blades, thinking they should all just hang and swing freely. To which I said, listen, man, that's not the knife you order. That's not the knife I make. I'm not some fucking gay jewelry maker. I don't give a shit about that stuff. Pardon my French for all you Frenchmen out there. I said, I make tactical tools. I don't believe in a knife swinging freely like that. I, don't, I think a knife should always. This knife right here is on bearings. This is on ball bearings. This is smooth criminal, okay? This knife should hold anywhere you put it. Why? So that when you release it, it doesn't swing around and bite you. Why? Because it has never been a requirement. and uh, It's not an advantage. It's nothing. It is no positive to have a knife swing freely like it's a pendulum on a clock. That's not the type of mechanism it is. That's gay. It's stupid. It's a fetish. It's like wearing leather sex equipment. Unnecessary. Anyways, nice enough guy, but like out in fucking left field. Well, I just, I was like, listen, I tried calling the guy as soon as he emailed me. It's a long email. And I, then I got the emails from my crew. They're like, hey, boss, did you see this guy's pinging us again? So I, I pinged him. I said, listen, man, I've been trying to call. He says, I'm driving. All it says is I'm driving. Well, he lives out in California. Fine, you're driving. You can't answer my phone call. So he can't answer the phone call, but I'm getting these long text messages and emails. So he's got all this time to text message and email me. And I was pretty, I was pretty snarky back to the guy. You know, I was like, quit being OCD. Your fucking problems are not mine. The night's fucking lovely. And I was talking with Amy. While we're sitting there, I'm like, I just want to give this dude his money back and tell him to fuck off. You know, I didn't say that. And I'm sitting there in side barn with the wife. It's 8 o'clock at night and I'm ready to swallow a bullet. And yesterday was an awesome day. I had a bitchin' knife company day. I got a lot done. Got new models coming out. New sheets done for a couple of new knives. It was an epic day. And I feel like I just got my... And the guy's like, I can't believe you do this to a fellow Marine brother. And dude's calling me out. And I'm like, that's a fucking two-way street, man. I've been over fucking backwards for this guy. So he says, I'm sending back the knife, I want a full refund, I'm sending back the t-shirts you gave me, the patches you gave me, all the swag, I'm not wearing it, I'm fucking done with you guys. So anyways, I was ready to swallow about 2.30 in the morning, I'm landing last night, my eyes open, all I wanted to do was fucking go find this guy and punch his teeth out. It was like, and then, and then, of course, you know, that's my initial raw alpha male instinct. And then the rest of me is going, how could you have handled it better so that this doesn't happen? There was no fucking unwinding this guy. He started nitnoiting us for swing and action before he got his knife. It's a fabulous fucking blackout Praetorian tie. So I had that dude that worked me years ago for a knife. For his dying grandfather. And I put the wrong coating on the blade. Because six weeks before blade show. I jumped through my ass to finish this knife for him. And I started making the knife. Before he made up his mind. About all the special details. And when he finally made up his mind. Eight days later. The knife was you know already committed to the process. And I delivered it to him. Like right after blade show. So my busiest two month period of the year. For any knife maker. I whipped this dude up a knife. I cut him to the front of the line. 
It's the only time I've ever broken the line except for guys in deployed downrange, ordering from overseas. I broke the line because I got a soft spot for grandfathers, because I loved both my grandfathers and they mattered so much to me. So the guy needled me for a knife. I got him the knife and the dude fucking went off on me like I'm some punk ass fuck. And I was like, fuck you, and I, I gave him his money back. <laughs> that was my first return. That was my first and only return. And now I got this dude here, and he says he's in the knife community, and he says he's a big collector, and he has a lot of knives, but he doesn't really sound like it. And I checked around, and I only made a couple phone calls, and I ran into somebody who kind of raised their eyes and browed him. So anyway, not the end of the world, but... It just, I, sorry guys, I don't have many losses. When I have a loss, like I, I'm not able to handle the situation, it just fucking gets my goat. So the knife will be back here in the next couple days. I'm sure he's going to be on forums, motherfucking me, what a prick I am, blah, 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 blah. But I'm telling you guys, if you get through my fourth, my, the four people on my staff, you know, between uh, Samantha, Amy, Jeff, I mean, Jeff will fucking talk to a, homeless guy, he'll be, I mean, Jeff's awesome, there's a ton of energy, and, and if these folks get worn out by somebody on the phone, and Gina, if they're all worn out by the interaction of a single knife, and this dude just plumb wore my whole team out, and I took it on my shoulders, and I dropped the ball. So anyways, the knife's going to be available in a couple days, give me a buzz, and uh, we're, we're going to do something for it, you can uh, reach out to us, we're going to do something to get the knife back out in the world, because the knife, I've had it in my hands now four times, it's fantastic, it's an absolutely fucking lovely knife, and I'd love to see somebody out there carrying this thing into the knife world, um, it, 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 the fucking knife is awesome, so I'm, I'm just, well, I just thought I would call up and vent a little bit, hopefully you guys uh, love the new website, make sure, please uh, get a chance, go over, like our Facebook page, if you haven't liked it already, you probably have if you're watching this, I don't even know if anybody's on Facebook anymore, I went on Facebook, and I saw the politics around guns, and I was just, I was ready to work a gun on myself, man, it was just nutty, anyways, um, we're going to do something, and, uh, you know, I try to do cool stuff for my fellow Marines all the time, but it shouldn't involve me taking it in the ass. So I don't, I don't know what to tell you guys. It shouldn't involve anybody taking it in the ass. It should be me doing cool stuff for somebody. But I've been over backwards. There's just nothing I could do for this guy. So I wish him all the best. And I, I, I hope that he decides knives are not for him. Because the other guys in the knife community, my customer service, we have presently, 2016 through 18, is fucking f phenomenal. And, and good luck. Just good luck. That's all I can tell him. I don't know what to tell you. Crazy stuff. Um, so I'll sign out. And I've got cool new things coming soon. I'll probably shoot up another video sometime today. So anyways, you guys, have an awesome day. Great man from Med for Nine, MKT USA. I'm going to go crawl into a dark area, lick my wounds, and get ready for tomorrow.